morning, everybody. It's a sunny morning on this Tuesday. And you know, today is probably one of the last sort of cool days for our big warm up tomorrow. I'm your host, Naturalist Kirk. Welcome to Lowry at Home. I am happy you are here. Now, if you're not watching live this morning, remember you can always just scroll and skip through our uh, countdown at the beginning if you don't want to watch all that. I want to thank you for being here. Today we have something new we're trying out. Uh, Naturalist Elise is going to be doing one of our uh, presentations we do for groups sometimes that is on reptiles and amphibians. And so you'll see her down in the corner doing the presentation and you'll see the presentation on the main screen. Hope you enjoy it. We're trying out something new and I'll see you back here when she's done. Take it away, Elise. Hi, this is Naturalist Elise and we're going to learn today a little bit about reptiles and amphibians that are living in the West Metro of the Twin Cities, Minneapolis and St. Paul. Well, reptiles and amphibians, the first thing many of us think of is cold-blooded animals. The fancy term for that is ectotherm. An ectotherm, a cold-blooded animal, is when an animal does not make its own heat. It gets its heat from the area around it, like the sun, the water, or the ground. And if it wants to get warmer or colder, it has to go to a place that's warmer or colder. When we think of amphibians in Minnesota, you probably know about frogs and toads, but did you know there are salamanders here too? We're gonna to take a look and see which species are here. Along with amphibians, we also have reptiles. That's turtles, snakes, and lizards. One of, our, one of the things that many people might already know about amphibians is that ampha means double life. It means those amphibians are spending part of their time in the water as an egg, then a tadpole, then an adult, and then part of their time on land. So ampha means double life. Whereas the reptiles, when they hatch on land, they just like look like an, a mini adult and don't go through metamorphosis. The amphibian eggs are gelatinous with no shell and the reptile eggs have a shell on them. The amphibian skin is smooth and permeable, which makes them more susceptible to chemicals getting right in their body through their skin, whereas the reptile skin has scales and is impermeable, which not only helps them in terms of chemicals, but it also means that they can withstand severe heat in places like deserts better than an amphibian can. Let's look at some of the reptiles that are here in the Twin Cities. The most popular one is probably the painted turtle. They're cute, they're colorful, not only do they have those yellow stripes on their neck, but they are bright orange on the bottom. They live for a long time and you'll start to see these at the end of the spring, beginning of the summer. They're looking for a place to lay eggs. The females will leave the lakes and ponds that they live in and start looking for a place on land to lay eggs. Please do not keep them as a pet if you find them because taking one turtle out of the wild is not just one turtle, it means you're taking out all the baby turtles that that turtle will ever have. And you do need to have a permit to keep turtles these days. So please leave them outside. Less popular is their cousin, the snapping turtle. Snapping turtles are probably less popular because they're a little more aggressive. But if you look at that underside, that plastron on the turtle, it is small. So snapping turtles have to snap or bite to be able to protect themselves. Because if the predator, such as a coyote, flips them over, they can easily kill them without such a good protective shell on the bottom. Their top shell though is really good, thick with spikes. Our, our next turtle is called the Blandings turtle. They are here in the Twin Cities, although they are less common. I think they look so cute with that yellow chin and that high shell that looks more like a box turtle and yellow and black on the bottom. If you see one of these, definitely don't keep one as a pet. I've only seen one in the wild once. There are a variety of other map turtles, false map turtles and soft shell turtles in the Twin Cities. These are found mostly in rivers or very large lakes and you're less likely to run into them. You may, however, 
find this non-native turtle called the red-eared slider. It's not one that we really want to see in the Twin Cities because it's not supposed to be here. So if you have an animal as a pet, please do not release it into the wild. Snakes are probably a little less popular than turtles. I wonder what kind of snakes we have here in the Twin Cities. Well, let's take a look. The brown snake is pretty harmless. Camouflage, and you're not very likely to see it because it is so well camouflaged. If you find one and you pick it up, it might try to bite you, but instead of biting you, it will more likely squirt some stinky juice onto your hands. And none of us really like that, although we are washing our hands a lot lately. Besides the brown snake, you might also find a garter snake. They also are good at squirting stinky juice onto your hands. Or they could bite you. They are a little bit aggressive, but not poisonous. So if you see a garter snake, um, just leave it be. My favorite is the red-bellied snake not just because it is bright red on its underside, but because if I try to pick this one up, it plays dead. And really, I like that. That way I can take a close look at it and return it back to nature without getting stinky juice on my hands or getting bit. It's a little bit smaller than some of the other snakes, sometimes only the size of a big nightcrawler worm. Let's take a look at the amphibians that are around here. Well, before we do that, I should mention the prairie skink is our one lizard species that we have around here, striped and hard to find. I've only found one in the wild twice. Moving on to our amphibians, we have the leopard frog, that big jumper with those spots found throughout the whole state, very hard to catch. The chorus frog that has been busy singing this spring, it sounds like someone running their fingers along the teeth of a comb. They're pretty camouflaged and so kind of hard to find, but you are likely to hear them more than see them. And then the green frog. The green frog looks a lot like a bullfrog. It has a call that sounds like croak, croak. Some people think it sounds like someone plucking the strings of a banjo. The bullfrog is not native to Minnesota and has caused a few problems. As you can see, it eats other frogs and it looks a lot like the green frog. So the way that you can tell the difference is to look at that ridge that starts behind its eye. And if it's got the ridge running down the side of its back, then it's a green frog. If it doesn't have that ridge, it's a bullfrog. And we don't want those around eating all of our native frogs. Tree frogs are really cute. We find those in the forest, eating mosquitoes and other insects. They can be gray or green and they can change colors. And they do a lot of good helping control those mosquitoes. You've maybe seen them stuck on the side of your house with those suction cup feet that they have. The American toad is another popular amphibian. No, you won't. Won't get warts from touching this one, but if you pick it up, it might pee on you. So best to leave those in the ground. You don't want to return them back to the pond. They're actually a forest toad. With that tough skin, they're able to tolerate a little bit drier climate than or habitat than some of the other amphibians. And then the eastern tiger salamander is our biggest salamander that we have here in Minnesota. It actually is a tadpole one. It's younger, just like frogs and toads. And that picture on the left shows those feathery gills that stick out from around its neck, looking pretty cool. If you find a salamander, please don't keep them as a pet. There really just aren't as many. I hear from adults all the time how they used to find these as kids and never find them anymore. The blue spotted salamander, is found a lot in decaying logs in the woods. It's quite a bit smaller than the tiger salamander. Very pretty with those light blue spots. And they are very specific to a certain log. So if you find one, please leave it in the log where you found it. 
I've never been lucky enough to find the Eastern Newt in the forest. So if you find one of these, you are luckier than I am. Please leave it there because there just aren't many of them in Minnesota. Well, one more member of the salamander family is the mud puppy, and it's our only fully aquatic salamander, meaning it lives in the water its entire life. Those things on the side of the neck are gills, and it does look a lot like the tiger salamander tadpole form. It's one of the few amphibians that's actually active in the winter under the ice in the cold water. Well, I hope that you've gotten the idea that reptiles and amphibians are really important here in Minnesota. The snakes are controlling our rodent populations. The turtles are busy eating dead stuff and live stuff in our ponds, cleaning up our ponds. The frogs are eating all sorts of insects, helping knock down our mosquito and fly population. So it's not nearly as annoying to be outside in nature and then the way that you can help these reptiles and amphibians is by leaving a wild area in your yard, if that's possible, so that there's habitat for animals. Also, by not using harmful chemicals in your yard if you can help it. And then educating your friends and neighbors so they know not to keep turtles and other animals as pets. And they can buy those in pet stores if they are really interested in a reptile or amphibian pet. Well, I wanna thank you today for joining me. This is naturalist Elise, and I'll see you soon. Back to Kirk. Thanks, Elise. That was great. I hope you guys learned a lot there. And uh, I want to thank people uh, who sent in new photos for our slideshow, pre-show countdown. It's been fun to see all the new photos coming in. Please do keep on sending those. I hope you have been enjoying our programming. We got a whole bunch more planned out to bring to you. And it'll be starting tomorrow. We'll be seeing you again tomorrow. We're here every weekday at 10 a.m. with some new content for you. See you tomorrow. Have a great day. Bye-bye.